Some facts may sound convincing, but that doesn't mean they're true. Even science can lead us down the wrong path with cool sounding yet incorrect information. We're starting off with a classic health tip which turned out to be hooey. I'm Mike with List 25 and these are 25 facts that science just debunked. But before I begin, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe with that notification bell. It truly helps the channel. All right, let's get debunked. I don't know what that means. 25. Rust doesn't cause tetanus infections. It's never a good idea to handle rusty objects without gloves in case you get a tetanus infection. That's what people think, but it isn't true. Tetanus doesn't need rust. It's just an iron oxide reaction that corrodes the metal and is harmless compared to a nasty infection like tetanus. The real problem lies with a bacteria called Clostridium tetani, which unlike rust, isn't visible unless you have a microscope. If there's bacteria on the rust, then you have to be careful, as you would with anything you picked up off the ground. 24. James Watt didn't invent the steam engine. Historical legend says that Scottish engineer James Watt invented the steam engine in the 1760s, revolutionizing the way people traveled. What a load of hot air. Or, to be more exact, steam. The reality is, Watt improved on the steam engine concept, but we need to go back a few decades to meet the true inventor, Thomas Newcomen. He was an ironmonger who developed the original atmospheric steam device. Watt went on to add stuff that made the mechanism more efficient and energy intensive, and in case you're wondering, he wasn't inspired by a steam kettle either. Few major inventions are a one-man operation. The fact is true for Watt, as anyone else. He worked with engineer and businessman Matthew Bolton to promote his version, making the steam engine a team effort. 23. Riding a bike is more about humanity than physics. A bicycle stays upright thanks to two factors, gyroscopic forces and what's called trail. Gyroscopic forces are created when the wheels of the bike spin, and trail involves the geometry of the bike. Now, if you're wondering what I'm talking about, then relax. You don't need a physics diploma to understand how someone rides a bike. The fact is, while gyroscopic forces and trail contribute to stability, they aren't the whole story. Human balance, steering input, and reaction time are just as crucial. That's why riderless bikes fall over. 22. The real reason we have seasons. We have summer when our orbit is close to the sun, and winter when we're far away. That's the spin people put on it, However, it's time to debunk another so-called fact. For starters, we're closest to the yellow ball at the start of the year, not a time known for its blazing hot temperatures. What you've got to focus on isn't the distance, but the tilt, specifically the axial tilt, which at the moment is approximately 23 and a half degrees. Why are we tilted? Scientists don't know the answer, but it's thought to have happened when we crashed into something big millions of years ago. Sunlight hits our two hemispheres as we tilt, and that's where the seasons shift gears. 21. You can bathe with eczema. One common misconception is that people with eczema should avoid bathing. Eczema sufferers must wash, like anyone else, but bathing isn't recommended due to the fact that it dries you out and aggravates the condition. Sure, you can get too dry if you aren't moisturized, however, that doesn't mean you shouldn't take a bath or shower. Hydration works even if you have eczema. Timing is everything, with medical experts recommending short periods in lukewarm water, after which you soak and seal by applying moisturizer. Don't let the water evaporate, otherwise that itchiness will come back with a vengeance. Also, not eczema, psoriasis. So, for everyone who has uh, asked in the past, hey, that rhyme. 20. Humans don't explode in a vacuum. It looks cool in movies, shows, and cartoons, but well, it's time to burst your bubble. Human beings will not go in space, or any other vacuum for that matter. The same goes for decompression, like when you repressurize after going deep underwater. Granted, being exposed to these forces won't do you any favors. Your insides will expand and boil, and you could damage your lungs or pass out when the oxygen disappears. On the positive side, your blood will stay nice and gloopy, and it's only your saliva that reaches boiling point, thanks to the threshold being lowered through lack of pressure on water molecules. 
Scenes where characters explode are entertaining to watch and totally made up, which is actually kind of a relief. 19. Nuts, popcorn, and seeds do not inflame your colon. Diverticulitis is when a fleshy pouch grows in your intestine and becomes inflamed. A non-inflamed pouch, called a diverticula, is thought to be largely harmless. It's when bacteria invades the pouch that things become dangerous. So, how could bacteria reach the diverticula? There's a myth which says snacks like nuts, popcorn, and seeds can get into the pouch and cause inflammation. This isn't correct. Or at least there isn't any scientific proof to back it up. These foods are high in fiber, meaning they probably won't trouble your colon much anyway. The true reason why we develop diverticulitis is open to debate among scientists. 18. Your brain makes new neurons. Neurons are what our brains use to communicate with our bodies. This nerve-based messaging system is highly effective. However, some people think you only have a set amount of them. Let me tell you something. We are actually capable of producing fresh neurons through a process called neurogenesis. This was first confirmed in the late 90s following three decades of research and study. Neurons were being born in someone's hippocampus, or the section of the brain focused on memory and learning new stuff. What do brand new neurons mean? A healthier mind and one better equipped to deal with aging and degeneration. Lifestyle could play a big part in encouraging neuron growth, though ultimately you can't hold back time. 17. Meteorites are not too hot to touch. Technically, you can touch some meteorites after they crash land on Earth. But aren't they baking hot from passing through space in our atmosphere? Surprisingly, no. Only the outside becomes superheated. Meteorites are generally freezing cold inside so they don't stay toasty for long. Of course, this doesn't mean you won't potentially burn yourself on one. Caution is advised when handling anything that's fallen out of the sky. Aside from the temperature, you also run the risk of becoming infected by a space bug. I'm kidding about the space bug. Oh, yeah. But you might be infected by adorable chihuahua space chihuahuas. Hi, Bella. Coming to say hi? Say hi to everyone. Oh, and Pika. 16. Obesity and metabolism debunked. Do you know the old rule about people with fast metabolisms being skinny and those with slow ones being fat? It's a misunderstanding over how science actually works. Your metabolism is certainly connected to your weight in terms of burning calories. However, just because someone is obese, it doesn't mean they have a slow metabolism. If anything, the metabolic rate is higher due to the levels of energy needed to keep their system going, even when resting. 15. Alcohol doesn't burn off through cooking. Pouring a bottle of booze in your meal isn't a problem, as the alcohol burns off. Well, it's a nice thought, but the reality is alcohol stays in the mix no matter how much you boil, roast, or fry it. One of the lowest possible quantities is 5%, and to achieve that, you have to be at the stove for two and a half hours. How many of us have time for that? Burning off alcohol isn't really a thing, which I will prove by giving you a stark fact about flambéing. This is where you briefly set fire to your ingredients in the pan. Can you believe doing this only gets rid of around 25% of the good stuff, with the majority left behind to liquor you up at the dinner table? 14. Egg versus Equinox Let's get one thing straight. You don't need the sun to be in a certain position in order to balance an egg. While the idea of the vernal equinox is a powerful one, it's a stretch to say that a tiny little egg can be affected by stuff going on in space. By the way, the, the vernal equinox is when the sun is right over the equator, making day and night last an equal amount of time. Our tides may flow according to the sun and moon, with gravity pulling them around, but eggs can be balanced with confidence whatever the time of year. You just need patience and the right kind of surface. 13. Protein and DNA Protein is a fundamental part of our makeup as human beings. So surely DNA has a bunch of protein in it, right? Wrong. There's protein in cells, but these are separate from DNA. The so-called building blocks of life are collections of things called nucleotides, compounds that exist in strands. Nucleotides together form nucleic acids, meaning DNA is an acid. It interacts with proteins in the body at a cellular level. In fact, DNA needs protein. That said, they aren't the same. 
I guess you could say they're more like work colleagues than family members. 12. Evolution isn't just a theory. Here's an interesting idea I never thought about before. When someone mentions the theory of evolution, does that suggest to you other options are available? Why are experts so certain when evolution is described as theoretical? Well, sometimes a theory is backed up by decades of evidence, both scientific and physical, making it more than just a theory. In science, a theory is a thoroughly tested explanation, not a guess. Ultimately, this is a word scientific types use, and there are dangers in taking it too literally. Facts wouldn't happen without theories, so best to just sit back and enjoy the evolutionary ride. 11. Hair cannot be repaired or restored. Should you believe the label on your shampoo bottle when it says it's going to repair and restore your damaged hair? Of course you shouldn't. These products are helpful, but your hair isn't something that can be repaired like a car engine. Fancy hair care purchases do a decent patch-up job by fusing split ends together and giving the outer shell of the hair, or cuticles, a good polish. What they're actually doing, however, is putting up a big sign reading, nothing to see here. The effects are cosmetic and temporary, but hey, isn't that what beauty treatments are all about? Unless someone is examining your head with a magnifying glass, there really isn't that much of an issue. Are there any so-called facts you'd like to debunk? Let us know. Our comment section is always open. 10. Red hair isn't going anywhere. Redheads are the butt of many jokes, but they have the last laugh. Any talk you may have heard about redheaded genes going extinct is totally wrong. Because red hair is inherited, it might have given people the impression that the gene will run out of juice. In fact, the opposite is the case. The gene in question is MC1R, which controls pigment in hair. Redness comes from a variant in MC1R and works hard to get where it's going. Both parents have to pass on the genetic variant so a red-haired child is born. This sounds super challenging. However, the variant can travel between people with different hair colors, so it's pretty versatile. You don't always need a redhead to make one, meaning redheads will probably go on forever. I've got a big patch right here. Nothing here. A big patch is in my beard. 9. Left or right? You do logic with the left side of your brain and creativity with the right. That's what people say anyway. They aren't correct, but you can see why they think that different sides of the brain control different things. The truth is, our brains are complex supercomputers, where the hemispheres work as a team rather than keeping them themselves. The corpus callosum, which joins left and right via a bunch of nerve fibers, processes lots of signals zapping back and forth. Your brain has conversations with itself, a little like a team talk in your head. There are specific things that happen in the left and right sides of the brain, however, describing it in such black and white terms isn't really accurate. 8. Buddha isn't a god. Buddha is a sacred figure and appears in many Buddhist temples and such, but he isn't a god. Buddhism doesn't rely on the concept of an all-powerful deity. This individual is merely enlightened and sets an example for others to live by. Buddha became a symbol of this belief system through dedication and meditation following the Noble Eightfold Path from when he was plain old Siddhartha Gautama back in the 5th or 6th century BCE. His teachings are a contrast to other religions. For example, in Christianity, the power of Christ compels people, something that just isn't Buddha's vibe. 7. Cold batteries last longer. Chilling batteries in the refrigerator, or freezing them in the deep freeze, is common sense, isn't it? Oh, if you want to screw up your batteries with condensation. You wouldn't dunk your batteries in water, so why on earth would you surround it with ice, or an environment with water of any kind? The key thing to remember with batteries is temperature. Going from cold to room temperature makes them moist and open to corrosion and general harm. As long as you're putting the batteries somewhere with a consistent temperature that isn't too hot, they'll last the distance. They can go the distance. I'm on my way. <laughs> Six, air quality on an aircraft isn't as nasty as you think. Yes, when you're sitting on an aircraft, you are breathing recycled air. However, the air has been thoroughly treated by the vehicle's HEPA filter. HEPA stands for High Efficiency Particle Air, and it handles those unpleasant particles with extreme prejudice. 
Stuff that's been sneezed out of someone's nose and into the plane is typically filtered out. Meanwhile, the system is partly replacing the supply with a fresh batch of air from the clouds you're flying through. The filters can't do anything about sitting close to someone with an infection. Those precautions are ones you need to take yourself. That risk aside, you aren't in much danger from airborne particles on an airplane, no matter how icky the situation sounds. 5. You can't tell what a cat is like from their fur color. Your feline friend is a lot like you. The things you experience, the place you live in, and your genetic makeup all contribute to what your personality and mood is like. It would sound ridiculous if someone judged you based on your hair color. So why we think cats behave a certain way because they're tabbies or black cats is a mystery. I guess it's just kind of fun to think of them that way. A cat's temperament can be shared through DNA, of course, and the volume of its meow might also be down to genetic factors. But overall, you can't judge a feline by its fur. 4. Tomato juice won't beat a skunk. If you get sprayed by a skunk, there are advantages to soaking your clothes in tomato juice. For starters, your clothes will smell more like pasta sauce than skunk chemicals. That was always a bonus, but if you're looking for a lasting solution, you won't find it in a bottle of tomato juice, ketchup, or any other such product. Interestingly, the effect of tomatoes on skunk gunk is more to do with desensitization or olfactory fatigue, to use the fancy description. Despite being one of the most awful smelling things in the world, your nose can actually adjust to a skunk attack, meaning you're tricked into thinking the smell is being neutralized. A truly effective way of beating the skunk is by combining hydrogen peroxide, baking soda, and dish soap, which destroy the stinky chemical elements. 3. Dodos weren't dumb. Dodos are dead, but before they were dead, they were dumb. Or were they? This is another persistent and counterfactual statement that must be debunked. Before going extinct in the 17th century, the dodo was known as a placid and fairly easygoing creature. Some have misinterpreted that as evidence that it was dumb and kind of deserved to die when human beings and other predators arrived in its home in Mauritius. This is insulting and wrong. How would you feel if someone came into your home bringing diseases and disrupting your existence? Experts have confirmed that dodos weren't dumb by studying their skulls, which are comparable to pigeons. Their brain capacity could have been similar, making them more intelligent than you think. 2. The interior of Earth isn't all molten rock. You'd be forgiven for thinking that we have a sea of molten rock in the ground beneath our feet. After all, we watch volcanoes erupting with their molten lava and figure there's a similar arrangement down below. The truth is, we do have superheated, liquefied rock in the Earth's core, but there's also other stuff in there. Metal, for instance, which can be molten in the outer core and solid at the inner. Then there's the mantle, sitting between the outer core and the planet's crust. That can be both solid and liquid. 1. There are more rocks in the Sahara Desert than sand. How much of the Sahara is pure sand? The statistics reveal a surprisingly low answer of up to 25%. It wouldn't be your classic desert without sand. However, there are also mountains, rocks, stones, and gravel. These form the majority of the landscape out there, even though the Sahara is presented as an endless stretch of sand. In fairness, the sand was depleted through strong winds, which blew billions of grains away, leaving the rocks behind. So the sand never really stood a chance. And today, it mainly exists in regions called ergs. Erg comes from the Arabic erk, which translates as dune field. Now, I'm so sorry if we pull the rug out from under you with some of these stories, but you know what they say. Facts don't care about your feelings. Now, the word debunk is fun to say, but where did it come from? Was it A, a story where someone fell out of bed? B, named after someone with the surname debunk? C, a book called Bunk? Or D, the town of debunk in Eastern Europe? Let me know your answer in the comments. And if you're ready for more debunking, well, then I have a list of general facts getting a thorough debunk in this next video, which you can watch right here. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you soon for a whole other list. I'm going to go debunk more things. Woo! It's fun to try. Just say debunked. Trust me.